I guess who who do you think is more likely to step up and make a player for this team? Obviously, you know, Hyman's getting the chance with McDavid. You've got Nuge, who's with the line changes down with Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, are you more optimistic that one of these guys can make an impact in game four? I don't know. It's 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 tough to say. I think the the second line there, the Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto line, it's like the pro back to 2019-20 line. They've really been flying around, but the Kings have really, and Zach mentioned this earlier, the Kings have really done an excellent job of dealing with Edmonton's first line. They give Connor McDavid virtually no space to, you know, get speed at all. They completely neutralized that line. And this was the trio that was so dominant for the Oilers during the regular season. So, you know, those are those are three really good players that are, are going to have to find their way through for the Oilers at some point. And as we saw in game two, it was bottom six contributions as well. You get the Derek Ryan opening goal. And then you get the Quinn cost and go ahead goal later in the game. Um, maybe that's what it's going to take. Like uh, you can't always expect Connor McDavid to just will his way through opponents. The Kings know him very well. They're coached by Todd McClellan, who used to coach here, knows Connor McDavid as well as anybody. And Phil Deneau, one of the best defensive centers in the league, Dowdy, Mikey Anderson, like we got to give the Kings some credit. They've done a really good job at shutting them down, but since all those guys are focused on the top line, there are going to be chances for the second, third, and fourth lines to contribute offensively, and that's what the Oilers need badly in Game 4. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys got a chance to hear any comments after, but there obviously was that lengthy review. Uh, the league determined that, you know, I think the puck was touched by a high stick, but on the way down it hit Ekholm, so gets rid of the, the high stick in there. So I, I think uh, that was kind of the final decision with that one. They allow the goal to count. Uh, but Gregor had the stat, the Oilers 2-10 and 10 in overtime since 2017. Uh, obviously, one of the wins was the kick, or the serious clincher against the Calgary Flames last year, McDavid. Uh, Zach, I, I was telling our producer, Gavin, before we got going, I had a bad feeling as soon as regulation ran out. I don't know what it is about this team, but the confidence just isn't there in overtime. Like, I, I don't know. You, you hope you have one of those guys who can just score a timely goal. You know, Trevor Moore gets the job done tonight for the LA Kings. But uh, something about overtime with this Oilers team, uh, I don't like it. And, and going back to regulation this year, or the regular season as well. Yeah, you're right. I mean, even in the three on three overtime, you saw the Oilers struggle uh, during the regular season this year, and which is strange to think of because, you know, you've got the two best players in the entire world in Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Um, but again, you know, we talk about these these non-star players, like these non like 97, 29 players for the Oilers, and they just haven't been involved in this series. And and you make the great point, Connor. You know, uh, I, Alex Iafalo, he's got a couple of big goals. Adrian Kempe, yeah. he's got a couple of goals. You know, that's a huge goal for Trevor Moore in overtime right there as well. You know, finding a way to bang in a loose puck on the side of the net, right? Um, it's frustrating to sit here and see because – you know, these guys like, you know, that have played in the top six were such a big part of the puzzle this year. And when there were nights where, you know, Connor and Leon maybe weren't firing on all cylinders, you know, you could rely on a guy like Zach Hyman to find a way to bury one or two or Nugent Hopkins, you know, found this great shot this season and was scoring a ton of goals. And it just seems to kind of dried up here. Um, just one quick interesting thing I'm seeing uh, from the Scouting the Refs Twitter account. Uh, they say that the Velarde in overtime there, they mm -hmm. say that it did hit Velarde's stick and hit, hitting Ekholm's back on the way down is not sufficient enough evidence to wave off a high stick. And apparently the situation made the situation room made the final ruling. Uh, but that was scouting the ref's opinion on that one, which is uh, 